Hi, this is Mandla Dube. You are watching Manawe Live. Hi, I'm Arnold Foslu, and you are definitely watching Manawe Live. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I was going to mess it up. Manawe. Manawe. Feels so good. Oh my God, it feels so good. Feels so good. Oh my God, it feels so good. Feels so good when you treat me like no other. No other. Feels so good when you call me your lover. Your lover. Feels so good. One lucky brother. Lucky brother. It feels so good. Oh. Hi guys, um, hey. so I'm Nanawe, also known as Nanawe Live uh, from the Nanawe Live YouTube channel. Nice to meet you guys. Uh, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. So I don't want to waste no time. I just want to quickly jump into it. Cool. Uh, but before I do that, I usually have like these funny little questions that I want to ask at the beginning yes. of like, the interview. Yes. But you don't need to answer them now. You can answer them at the end. Cool. So just think about it as we're going through the interview. So for you guys, simple questions, worst um, auditions ever. So oh, you can take your time and then we'll on, jump into on. the actual right, questions. Right, right. Okay, so on. my first question is to you, Tawara cool. Metsu. Um, and it is, so most people might or might not know this, but you were actually, um, you made it into the top 10 of the class, class X. Jeez, you were in fact, <laughs> 12, 12 you years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so basically what I wanted to ask you about that is that I would say you did have, you know, you did enjoy quite a career after that, but yeah. after that you only got your one would say your big break no. six years later with Ganesh. Okay, well, yeah. Um, so, yeah, firstly, well done for doing your research. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I did a show called Class Act, which is basically like an idols for acting. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I got my big break. Yeah. And you asked me a question about my worst audition. That was it. <laughs> uh, I was horrific, and it was arguably the worst part of my life because I was being, I was in the bottom three the entire time. I got knocked out at like seventh. And I was told literally every step away of how horrible I was. Uh, and then even at the end, everyone's like, like, maybe acting isn't for you. Uh, but my, my next break, yeah, you could say it was Kalushi, but I actually went on to have a good like international career. I did a lot of work. I worked with the likes of Meryl Streep, Daniel Radcliffe, between all of that. People just know me for this, for Kalushi, but I actually did a lot of different things there. What would you say for someone, I mean, you were told to your face that maybe acting isn't for you. Yeah. Look at us, look at you now, you know, <laughs> like, you know, uh, Star of Kalushi, Amanda, Silverton Siege, you know, you, you seem to be doing pretty great. So what would you say to your a younger version of yourself or anyone who might be going through uh, a similar trajectory in your career? You know, I think I was fortunate enough that when, whenever people say you can't do something, it generally motivates me. I do very well with negative uh, like motivation. So I just think, listen to yourself. You always write about yourself and uh, just trust the, your own inner voice. And I, mm -hmm. I think that's true for yeah. everybody. Yeah. yeah. And my next question is for you, uh, is it Stefan or Stefan? Stefan. Stefan. Yes. Okay, Stefan. That's sexy way. Yeah. <laughs> Some people have called me Stefan. Ooh. And I'm like, do I want to go there? I think so. <laughs> Isn't that like Steve Urkel's sexy alter ego? Maybe. I think, I think so. so. I think yeah. so. So my question for you, Stefan, is how basically did you come across the role that you play in, in Silverton and Siege? And can you take us through that audition process? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, this was during lockdown. Yeah, right. So we were doing self-tapes. And um, at the time, I didn't have anyone to do the self-tape with me. Yeah. So I, I, I did it without a, a, a reader. Yeah. And I just kind of did my lines and then kept silent when there was another person's line. So I learned everything in my head. Audition for it. And then I um, got a call from my agent that I got a call back. So I was like, okay, great. Didn't quite know because everyone is quiet. No one tells you that it's Netflix. Yeah. They don't say it. They're just like, oh, it's this thing, Silver and Siege, yeah. go yeah. And then I got the call back, went, got an interview with Mandla, spoke to him a little bit. Again, I didn't really know who Mandla was at the time. Yeah. Didn't really think too much about it. And then actually what happened is it came back that I got Silver and Siege and another really? Netflix production. Oh, I remember. So I got two of them <laughs> at the same time. And the other one, um, wasn't such a big role so I didn't know which one to kind of go for because I didn't know much about Silver and Siege yeah. and then I asked my, my agent and she, she said go to Bonnie which was the casting director yeah. and she was like trust Bonnie, trust Bonnie's vision yeah. and Bonnie said Silver and Siege 
do so with the siege. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's how I ended up here. And I'm so grateful. For, right. I even thanked her when we saw her. She's in the movie. Yeah, yeah she's, she's in, the in the movie. movie. Shout and out to Bonnie. Yeah, yeah, we did a scene with her and I, we sat backstage and I, I said to her, thank you so much for the for telling me to do this one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You were speaking about doing um, self tapes, and uh, most people might also not know this, but you actually have a YouTube channel. You I do have a YouTube channel. Yes, you do. <laughs> and um, one of the videos there is you actually, um, it's a very acting um, um, oriented YouTube channel. So one of the videos there is you doing self tapes and auditions and tips and what's in your acting bag. And what I noticed when I first landed on the YouTube channel was that um, it looks very cinematic, if one may say. Oh, thank and you. And then I later went on to find out that, oh, you're also not an aspiring filmmaker or a filmmaker let's call it yes. that right? you're straight up a director straight up filmmaker <laughs> okay. and photographer and my question is what made you want to prioritize acting over your other skills and tricks oh so i mean acting for me has always been a way of i think it's my biggest love you know this is the way i, I get to give out my craft and it's something that i've been trained in yeah um so i've always uh, sort of gone down that direction yeah. and then the filmmaking and the photography was just a, another outlet for me of, of you know an expression that sort of informs everything yeah. um which i'm exploring now a lot more which i'm so grateful for that i have the tools to be able to do that yeah okay all right and then back to you to um he once mentioned in 2019 if i'm not mistaken uh, that um, you, the question that you're being asked at the moment was do you feel like there are enough of these types of films? By these types of films we mean struggle related films, historical films and you said no um, and you are one of the first if not the first to actually be the lead star in that uh, back then it was Ganyushi um, of such a film and yet he, we see you once again in another film of the same tone and one thing you did mention in the interview you said the attitude of the South African needs to change because other countries such as the UK, the US, etc., are very um, patriotic country, countries that uh, you know uh, seize the means of propaganda yeah. and through art and film. Do you feel? How do you feel since then until now? Uh, based on that opinion, do you feel yeah. like there's been a positive or negative change? What's been the trajectory of that? Where do you feel like we are as a country as far as that is concerned? Yeah. Look, I, uh, I completely think that um, within, um, I still maintain that. I still maintain that we need to be extremely proud of our history. And uh, I don't mind if people say, oh, we're doing these again. We're doing these again. I'll do these till the end of time. Uh, if I'm, if I have any part in cataloging our history, I'll take that because at least I can leave that for the kids in the future. So I hope Africans embrace themselves and their propaganda. Yeah. Yeah, rock and roll. <laughs> it was good. I'm glad I deleted Twitter. Is it? Yeah, okay. You would have quoted, quoted me. All right, so my last two questions I'm going to ask you guys is what's the one thing we want people to take away from watching the film, specifically with the roles you guys play? Um, I had more questions, but I'm running out of time. Yeah, yeah, uh, something that I think people should take away, or I, I hope that people take away, is, is starting to question what is freedom? Mm. What is freedom for you and what is freedom for the people around you? And inside of the, the family structure that you have is to start that debate. Because mm. I think the film, each character is dealing with freedom in some regard and, and I really hope that that it starts a little debate because we don't necessarily need to change the world but we can change a little household yeah. you know and that, that to me is so exciting yeah I think for me uh, it's pretty simple and it sums up what you were talking about earlier on if your dreams or your goal are held hostage by others lay siege just lay siege man I go get them and you never answered the worst edition yes worst edition I was at a, it was for an ad and I was there and they were, they were doing this whole I don't know what it was for but then I had to be on an ostrich and so they said, okay, so stand with your legs apart. So I was standing with my legs apart. But then they were like, but we're not really going to see your head. So they put a balaclava on my head. And then I had to ride this ostrich. And I also needed to flip burgers. But I didn't have a spatula. I just had to mime flipping burgers, riding wow. this ostrich with a balaclava <laughs> on my head. And I never got it, thankfully. Oh, wow. So. <laughs> How did the ad come out with whoever ended up? I didn't it? watch it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I understand. I totally understand. <laughs> Oh. Why most it's neat, dude. Just because it's just going so well. So yeah. one more. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Um, so, one last question for, for yeah. Stefan yes. Rather. On your website, it's mentioned that you're bilingual yes. acting. It's something that you lean towards very much with English and Afrikaans. Uh, but another thing is, um, amongst your many credits, you've played a lot of racially ambiguous roles. Yes. How has that helped or hurt your career? I, I think it's only helped my career being able to be ambiguous yeah. in in my you know in casting as yeah. well 
and being able to speak Afrikaans definitely helps in Cape Town. Um, so, <laughs> and, and again, my family is Afrikaans, so yeah. it is a part of my heritage that I, I want to express in my art. Oh, one last one for you. Oh, you so, let's let's go. Go. Um, <laughs> do we have anything else we're looking forward to? You're writing, you're directing. Do you want to give us a little bit about that? Yeah, um, um, a lot of things, but also the most key thing is on the 27th of April, Silverton Seizures coming out on <laughs> Netflix. <only. laughs> sure, shout out. All right. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.